World of Horror got another very small update just this past Monday, uh, two days ago at time of recording, wherein they added additional modding tools. This represents a gigantic increase to the amount of content in World of Horror, because fans have been modding for this game for years. And the last time I played this game, I had a officially downloaded pack of 20 custom events that I downloaded from the World of Horror website. These are all sanctioned by the developer. I now have 457 custom events installed. The black ones are custom enemies. I installed custom mysteries and custom characters. There are a lot of additional things we'll be seeing right now in World of Horror. And all the mods now have additional options that they did not have before this past Monday. Also the update, the Blood Moon update from just before Halloween, broke a lot of the mods that were already out there. And then this past Monday's fix to it corrected that, so now the mods are usable again. This is very useful and awesome. Because now we have a bunch of new characters. This whole row here is new characters. Made by fans. Um, got some kind of shattered dimensional character. Puppet-chan is in the official game files just in a folder that does not connect to the main game in any way. But if you go into your World of Horror game files, there should be a section for extra content, and then in there is characters. And if you move the folder for Puppet Sean into a different folder in your local files, you can then play as this character. This example um, custom character. So that's pretty neat. Um, this is also a character that was in a pack that I downloaded from the developer on the Discord channel. The Discord channel is where I collected all of these mods, and they are very disorganized. People have tried to organize them. Some have done a very good job, but even still, you can't update them regularly besides manually going in and downloading new versions. All that good stuff. So... It's a bit burdensome to get these mods going. But at least now with the latest update, they work without too much uh, effort on your own part. I'll get more into what effort I had to go through as we check things out. But okay, we saw some ladies. One of them was a weird, shattered lady, but otherwise fairly standard ladies. I like the design of puppet -chan especially. But these could be regular characters, not this one necessarily, but the other two, clearly. We also have some other characters here. We have Damien, the legendary soldier, 44 years old, much older than all the other characters. Plus, plus, plus strength, minus, minus, minus charisma. All bite, no bark. Damien was part of some cloak and dagger military unit. Nobody knows why he's here. So we can play as Damien, the big dog man. The like angry eye patch furry. Then we have the adorable cartoon furry. Alexander Wolf. After the battles against the supernatural in his own town, Alex strived to end all supernatural beings and events after the death of his friend, setting sights to visit Chiyokawa. Weirdly heavy backstory for this adorable little critter. But the adorableness has only just begun. We have gone through like a de evolution of furriness. Let's devolve even further down to just a dog. We can play as a Shiba Inu, Chonky. His passion for solving mysteries is as big as his passion for dog treats. I love it. Chonky is the best character in World of Horror. Let's take him out for a drive. 
I don't want him to have the seventh curse, because that will make all of his friends die. Hopefully we can get some extra dogs to be friends with Chunky, get a full dog party going. So for our backstory, let's... I wouldn't mind having the extra money, quite honestly, but, you know, we'll take what we can get. Um... Now we want extra actions available. Let's take one of the less burdensome backstories. This one might be good. When we take combat damage, we can acquire a curse. And yeah, he's he's Scooby-Doo, but a Shiba Inu. Scooby-Noo. That sort of works. Um, Curious Birthmark will be perfect. Chonky is the most modded character out of any of these. I'll talk about the new modding tools, especially if they come up on the character. Um, let's reduce the difficulty, actually. Because this is mostly for demonstrative purposes. I want to show off a lot of stuff. And if I try to take the most efficient route that doesn't kill me, I won't get to show off very much stuff. Plus, who wants to see Chonky die? Not me. Uh, anything else? Nope, we're all good. Backstory, or the god doesn't matter. Backstory also doesn't matter. But the god especially doesn't matter. Go to is usually a good choice. Yeah, let's stick with the though too. I don't think I've seen all of the new um, old god status effects, but we'll be playing several new uh, playthroughs this time. Look at him. Best portrait for the best boy. Starting with an old coin, one free curse removal, if we get a bad one. As a reminder to myself, mostly, if we ever get hit, we will probably get afflicted with a curse. Pretty sure it has to be stamina damage, though. To load this... Make sure we have prepare, even though prepare doesn't really work for custom characters. We'll see more about that later. Bring about the history club, because why not? The main thing we want is obviously the regular shop. So we can talk to the other dog. Maybe get a dog discount. Empty bottle. Tons of funds, because easy mode lets you have a lot of funds. There is an alternate costume. Hell yeah. We'll stick with the default. And then after a few mysteries, I'll put on the bow tie. Let's uh, take a dog bath. Really disappointed that there is not a unique screen of the dog bathing with his back to us so we don't uh, see anything explicit. I have had to go through and... Uh, Select mods that do not add not safe for work content, because those are permitted on the um, Discord, and they are numerous, and they can be kind of hard to avoid, but they must be tagged, so I didn't have that hard of a time weeding them out. Oh, that's right, there's only four mysteries on easy mode. Well, that's fine for now. And here are our custom mysteries. When we get five mysteries, we will load a bunch of them. I guess I'll boost it off of the easy mode next time. For now... Once again, we're keeping Chunky nice and safe. We want... Beer Festival and the Crimson Cape. Which is going to be hard to do with only four mysteries. I can't get either of them right now. Hmm. Crimson Cape, but no Fear Festival. The reason we want those is because it permits us to collect masks very easily. 
Chonky has been designed to wear masks. So I definitely want to show that off. Fear Festival. Evolving Eels. This is a standard part of every run I go through. Used to be that you had to quit all the way back out to menu if you wanted to uh, check out new mysteries, though. Had pretty good luck getting one or the other lately. Crimson Cape. Found footage. Found footage again. Oh, Chonky, you've got the worst luck. Crimson Cape, Violent Vigil. Fear Fest. School Scissors. Unfortunately, Chonky does have a specific character portrait for the ending where your mouth gets sliced open. Not eager to show that one off. To myself, least of all. Also, I haven't really looked at any of the, the custom mysteries yet. This is atrocious luck, I'll tell ya. Oh, we'll get there. There's the Fear Festival. Perfect. Someone could probably do the math on the odds of us getting two specific mysteries. I got him. There we go. We will start with the Crimson Cape. Which we know well. We're supposed to go gather gossip, but Chonky can't talk. So they won't tell him how to defeat the man in a red cape. Whatever shall we do. First, we shall go here and restock until we get a ritual mask. Also, okay, Dex, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy Chonky a knife. First chance I get. There is no drawing for glass eyes. Oh, that was the ritual mask, I think, but here's another one. Slap that on. Gorgeous. You nailed it, Chonky. You had to break it to fit it on your face, but well worth the effort. And we'll get ourselves a very important knife. I guess we'll get a compass first. Because the knife is pretty cheap. Dogs pooping dogs. You love to see it. The steak knife probably tastes like steak. That's why we are putting it in our mouth. Getting ready to stab people with it. Like those ninja dogs that you see in video games and nowhere else. Oh, maybe we could have gotten a free mask. For the record, this character can be found on the Discord. And I recommend trying him out. Because I'm not going to show off all the unique drawings that the creator did. Demonstrate how cool this awesome character is. 75% chance to hit. That's our best opportunity to deal the most damage. Which is not all that much, but the enemy doesn't deal much damage. Not the best shot in the world there, Chonky. Oh, seven is all we need to do, so I can guarantee two of these or triple boost two of them. Yeah, that's lethal. Good work. And then we just follow the path. There's our sprite. I don't think it's unique to Chonky. 
I think that's just a sprite that any dog follower can have. It looks great. You walk through a neighborhood and encounter some people with masks and straw coats. One of them walks forward, says, Hey kid, if you want to get through, either you pay up or you get beat. Oh, you're gonna regret calling Chonky a kid. He's four years old, he's a full-grown adult. Um, let's fight him. Luck check failure. Extreme failure, I rolled an 11. Minus 10 stamina. Oh boy. So, some of the unique uh, events here. This is a fan-made event. And uh, some of them are gruesome. Much harder than anything you would get in the main game. You walk forward, cracking your neck and knuckles, and smile. Looks like we got a tough guy on our hands, says the one in front. You hear a gunshot. Look down to your chest to see a hole in the middle of blood pouring out. Well, we're lucky to be alive. But alive we are. We had stamina to spare. We decimal system while searching for a book using the library's directory file cabinet. You notice a small blood red colored envelope in between two pieces of card in the drawer. You're curious about what is inside of it. So we crack it open. Find some money. And stick it in our pocket. Our dog pocket. We can heal up. I'm not worried. Also, this gives me a good opportunity to show something off in a second here. First... We heard rumors among the nurses that a full room of the morgue was dedicated to the victims of the Snatchers. <laughs> As you go down in that room, you decide to check the bodies. There are a lot of references to other media. I don't know if this is a reference to Snatcher, but we'll see. Oh, perception check failure. Notice that sometimes two victims were related somehow, but it's such a slim hint, you probably didn't notice a vital clue. We are in the Wild West. Of stuff. Here in World of Horror. Um, I apparently cannot de-equip this. Yeah. So, let's go buy a flashlight. Or anything in the B slot. Ooh, dog treats. We gotta buy dog treats. We'll split them between the shopkeeper and Chonky. And we'll buy a flashlight. Oh, Chonky's still happy. That's good. But he does have some scratches on his face. Let's explore without the mask for a little while. Let's try and resist this. Stamina's headed further down. We got stamina to spare. Doom, I spend Doom all the time. Doom does not concern me. Don't trip. A pile of dead bodies drawn into a street's eye. What does it mean? Yeah, it is a pile of dead bodies. Um, vandalize it? Oh no, the town vandalized it. And someone robbed me while I was concerned about the sign. Hey, first missing girl. Ooh, Chan. A member of the swimming team at a local school has gone missing. Her grandma, with whom she lived, mentioned that she liked hanging out at the beach with her friends. That's clearly a charisma check. Chonky's charisma is through the roof, for obvious reasons. Failed it. Plus one doom. Akamanto. If I choose the blue paper, he will stab me in the brain. Or choke me. Oh. That's the stamina down one, apparently. I prefer that didn't happen. 50% chance to hit. Yeah, I don't think uh, Chonky's gonna make it out of here. <laughs> I don't have a lot of ways to get through this. Why is the red paper the reason one? 
Ah, well. This version of the mystery is just the actual folklore behind Akamanto, which is an actual folk story. Doesn't matter what I do here. Donkey's going down with a smile. Gotta appreciate that about him. I got cursed signs, and it's too bad I can't see my face. Yeah, let's get myself... This won't save me. I'm still at zero. And I won't die until after the combat, so... Get out of there. Hop back in. It will redeem Chonky. And see... Many more of the hundreds of unique events that I have installed. So, Ithotu might be a little dangerous for me. Let's do this one. Oh, I didn't, uh... Okay, my difficulty is set properly. Sort of. Hit the History Club. Out of habit more than anything else. Library notes, let's learn some chonky spells. Rainworms. And Ashen Contract. Immediately kills anyone who isn't an outer god. Ooh, flesh regrowth, that could be useful. Mind drain, also potentially useful. And we get to keep the thing. Oh, not yet. Go back, take our bath. Uh, where's back? Huh. There's no back button. Chalky ate the back button. Well, you only get um, five experience on the first bath. So that's probably fine. I could have used the reason recovery. Ah, well. We still need Akamanto. And the Fear Festival for mask purposes. Crimson Cape, excellent. The custom mysteries tend to be shorter and easier than the ones from the main game. There we go. Fear Festival, Crimson Cape. So, we'll hop right into one of these custom mysteries. We can't take this one, because it's an alternate to the Fear Festival. If we take that, we skip the Fear Festival. And we can't do either of these, either. No cannibalistic colonists, nor creepy cicadas. Hopefully next time, because those sound like good mysteries. A dreadful disappearance. Sounds fun. All your friends have gone on vacation. Meanwhile, you appear to have vanished. I did? Strange missing persons posters with odd symbols on your face on them have started to show up. People seemingly just see right through you. Trying to knock on the doors of your neighbors, you are only met with confused looks as if you're not there. Uncomfortable silence fills your ears every time you ask anyone a question. What is going on? I got blocked on Twitter. You should try and see if your neighbors will talk to you again. Maybe it's just a simple misunderstanding. Maybe. First, we saw what the mask looks like. Let's just go right for our steak knife. We'll start with the dog treats, because I'm probably going to do a lot of shopping. Um, I missed my chance. I got a blue gem, which could take me to Shibu, Shiba Inu World, where I would be happy the remainder of my days. I'd rather have the bottle. Now I just need... knife. Take the flashlight instead. Hmm. Nothing much of value here, though. I'll take the map... And hope that I get sent to the forest frequently. Slash the village. I know we're going to the Fear Festival next, so the that's both Forge and Villas. For, 
forest and village. Eesh. That should bring my doom down considerably. Over the course of that mystery, there's our steak knife. All set. Ready for action. Yeah, shop dog. Uh, totally sees us. Unlike all of our neighbors. Sniffed each other's butts, and we are best of friends. Kuro Yuri. Now this is something you didn't expect to find in your mailbox today. Someone has sent you a love letter with a Kuriyuri flower inside. In the letter, the unknown person proclaims their admiration to you and praise your good looks. That's sweet. How can you not? Look at that. Um, we'll cherish it. Plus three reason. Keep the letter and the flower inside your desk. Every time you open it, you get this satisfying feeling that someone out there admires you. That's a feel-good event. A lot of the events are extremely well-drawn, too. I picked the, like, 400 best mods that I could find. You can get all sorts of shoddy mods, meme mods, and you might enjoy them. They're not for me, but typically they're pretty easy to weed out. Chonky has turned into a human briefly. We've all been there. Lay motif of death. You hear a strange high-pitched screech coming from one of the apartments. Listen on in. What an odd noise. Off we go. Our enhanced dog hearing does not help us solve anything there. Thinking it might have something to do with the apartment itself, you head downtown to see if you appear to any other people there. Are we only invisible in the apartment, or will we be invisible in the streets? <laughs> So the chibi icon is one of the reasons that I had to go through a lot of hoops to get the mods working. While crossing the road, a car comes speeding at you. Jump away. Dex check failure. Car hits you, sending you flying across the street. No one cares because we're invisible. Cut arm sinew. Minus one damage in combat. That simply will not do. Rob the dock, and get patched up. And get some extra experience out of the deal. Because he likes us. Baffled, we decide to check the school library newspaper archives to see if anything similar to this has happened before. Should be easy to get in there, even though we're a dog. There's no rule that says a dog can't go through the computer archives, though. While scouring the internet for possible new leads, a program starts downloading without your consent, and soon a pop-up window blocks your view. At surface level, it doesn't appear to be an advertisement of any kind, but rather some kind of astronomy tool. Let's uh, play with it. Call the computer science lab for help. This is probably knowledge. This is probably charisma. Unplug the computer and walk away. That's probably luck if I had to guess. Charisma check. Failure. Having horrible luck on all my checks. Did I accidentally pick? The ill-fated background. Fumble your way around the conversation. The young man at the other end of the line seems uninterested by your seemingly pedestrian problems. Tried turning it off and back on. No. I'm a dog. So, custom characters... They use pools of perks, rather than having their own unique starting perks. We will see what unique perks are available to us when we level up. And they're not unique, they are part of a pool that other characters would have, but they would be unique to other characters, you know what I'm saying. Character-specific perks. Uh, you find an old newspaper clipping. Shukawa, 1973. Girl missing for a month found dead of, her, of apparent dehydration in her house. Police unsure as to how she wasn't found during the search. There's a picture attached of the police spokesperson. His eye sockets are so deep that you cannot see his eyes. How is that possible? I guess his eyes were falling out? 
And that's why he couldn't find the girl? Everyone's eyes are falling out instead of us turning invisible. Everyone else is going blind. We're a dog again. Ooh, a ritual mask. The cult defector. I told you an apartment across from yours had been staking you out. See them leave the apartment through the peephole in your door, and you sneak in. The apartment is a mess, half-eaten pizzas and empty cigarette packs. In one corner of the room is a weapons locker. Into the wall is paperwork, including your name, schedules, family, and so on. And burn the info. Break the locker, search the room. I gonna burn the info. Doom down. Pull all the pages off the wall and quickly retreat back to your apartment. Tear the pages and burn them. You hope they didn't have a copy of that information. When you're going to get a glass of water back at your apartment, you see something fall out of the tap. It slithers down the drain before you can catch it. CERN, you decide to head over to the hospital. This mystery is getting weird. Eyeballs are falling out. Slime monsters coming out of the faucet. Weird parcels being unrelated to the mystery. While searching for a clue, you pass through the waiting room, and in one of the seats there is a letter with your name on it. Let's crack it open. Luck check failure. There's a message. It says, Shit wine, but good times. For your second... For a second, your vision becomes blurry, and instead of the letter, you're holding a bottle of wine. Okay. Did I actually get a bottle of wine? No. Weird. I guess it was only wine for a second. Shit wine at that. Okay. Label Deef of Death 2. You hear strange sounds coming from the vents. Listen on in. Change our mind halfway through. Getting real bad rolls still. You're just about to leave and go home, but then you see it. Investigate forest. Hmm. In the hospital morgue, you find one of your neighbors. But his head is all wrong. It's lumpy. It looks like a water balloon. His brain is pulsating slowly, and every now and then, a slim creature pops in and out, undulating in an almost hypnotic fashion. There it is. There's the cult symbol. Turning on the lights, you discover something worse. Dozens of bodies, just like this, each with a small parasite in their head, slowly turning their brains to mush. Thinking fast, you turn on the crematorium and shove as many bodies in there as possible. The smell of burned flesh still lingering in your nostrils, you realize why no one responded to anything you did. These worm-like creatures must have gotten into Shiokawa's water reserves and taken control of the inhabitants. Having ran all the way from the hospital to your apartment, you notice how quiet everything is. All that is audible is a tap dripping somewhere. The posters are gone, seemingly ripped off the walls before you arrived. Then you notice the symbol drawn in a thick red liquid on your front door. Why do you have a headache? We might have a little worm in our brain. It's fine, we'll get some deworming medication. A few days later, your friends return home, blissfully unaware of what happened. The deaths of the people in the apartment were covered up as the results of a gas leak. You think you're ready to stick to bottled water for now, if it's not too late. School curfew. That's... We can't go to the library. I'll try to live with that. Um, Take our funds now. Put on our bow tie now. Excellent. And take our bath. Now. Did I have the brain worm? I do have brain worms. Unrelated to the mystery, but appropriate. I can... Reduce the doom at the cost of two stamina. I'm actually going to do that right now. Should have done that before I took my bath. 
Ah, well. Um, okay, Fear Festival's next. We're gotta get a mask on this good boy. And then, try Akamanto again. We know the Fear Festival inside and out. Go over here. Look through the peephole. Oh, someone's looking back. Someone who had a mask. The mask went to storage. And I cannot access storage throughout the remainder of this mystery. I don't think. Oh, well. We'll crack it on later. I'm actually going to sell this. Never know when we're going to need that one extra fund. The bow tie is the dog's alternate costume. Which I remind you, this is a custom character. And the creator made a normal costume and an alternate costume. And different effects for a lot of the statuses that you can acquire. And different um, displays for a lot of the masks you can acquire. And we're going to show one of those off as soon as this mystery is over. Into the forest. Where we get a little chibi sprite. The thing in the bog flies buzz around you as you wade through the ankle-deep water. Suddenly you fall back into the water. Something has you by the ankle. It's trying to pull you deeper into the swamp. That's probably a strength check. All for help might be a charisma. No one hears you. As you thrash around in the water. Just as suddenly as it grabs you, it lets go and disappears. Well, it took more stamina than reason, so that's okay-ish. Into the village. We haven't seen any village mysteries slash events. The cultist priest. As you walk through empty alleys, a dark figure lights a cigarette and approaches you. Let's have a chat. Christmas success. The priest believes you are a member and you gain valuable insight. Huge benefit. 20 experience minus 2 doom. Prisma paying off. Um, let's stick with the village. So... Okay, Hilltop Shrine. The trail to an abandoned Shinto shrine is overgrown and steep. However, it could be an important place to investigate. Let's go through it quickly. Strength check failure. I would have failed regardless if I had twice the strength. You hurt your knee badly. You step on a loose stone and fall down. You limp back to the village. Let's get the injury checked. Bummer. Now... We'll stick with the... Forest for now. No unique enemy this time. There are unique enemies in the mod pack that I have. Our best bet here... Only a 60% chance to hit, and I can only boost one attack. Might be to run away. Because our maximum damage is only 10. If I land it all, it's still two and a half turns. And we probably won't land it all. Odds are stacked against us. Take the sure safe route. Wasn't a unique enemy anyway. Strange woman came from a mod pack that I had installed for a long time. So uh, tell her what's troubling us. Win prize B. <laughs> that event was probably altered. A lot of the mods had their parameters changed based on what the game tries to call them. And that broke a lot of the characters. Unfortunately, I had to actually go through and mod some of the mod characters to get them working. Chonky was not. Chonky's developer, the person who made Chonky, has done a very, very good job keeping it up to date. So all I've had to do was uh, download the latest version of Chonky. Everything works great. And then I based my editing of the other characters 
off of what I read in Chonky's .ito file. I've done a fair bit of work to get these mods working. Yasugi. Feeling like you are being called by a voice in the forest, you dare to venture off the road, only to find Father Yasugi? Hey, kiddo, says the priest, who's currently moving some boxes in and out of the ruined building. Could you lend me a hand? Normally this is a very good mystery to get, but this is clearly a corrupted version of it, made by one smug cat. And accept our burden or strain mind. I'm guessing strength check versus knowledge check. Or no check whatsoever. Plus three two, minus two stamina. With a feeling of unease, you push the heaviest box, feeling something squirming inside more and more as you move it. Afterwards, Father Yusugi invites you in. You remember screaming in protest, but you only come to see your senses later, weeping and tired among the parishioners. Fair enough. So reporter's bag is normally the camera guy's unique perk, but it's in our perk um, pack. I could have an extra inventory slot. I kind of actually need that. But dex up is too good to resist. Double dex up. Now we can actually get in fights and win. Um, this one I've seen so many times. I believe check the lotus flowers is good. If we pass it, and failing it is even better. Plus one reason. We're done here. It's our aunt. Our aunt is a human for some reason. But I do like the uh, splattered yellow stuff on the old god's face. This color palette. Pretty cool. I believe it is called Caution Tape, if you wish to install it yourself. I mean, it's already installed. But look it up among the, like, hundreds of color palettes in this game. You won't be disappointed. Um, actually gonna take the stamina this time. Get right back to work. I'll be ready for Akamanto. My dex is very high. I got a knife. I think we're ready for Akamanto. Because I don't know what any of these mysteries are all about. Could be anything. Oh, important. Almost forgot. And I can't go back, so I'll do it during Akamanto's mystery. Because I did forget. We have a new mask. Hiding out. Storage. Arukosa. Aru Kosa. Doesn't fit perfectly. You'd think the nose would be able to poke out through the hole in the middle. No such luck. But Chonky makes do. Nothing stops Chonky from wearing his preferred mask. Unfortunately, the mask isn't actually very good. So I'll keep it for now, but I'm going to switch off of it back to the flashlight momentarily. Maybe we'll fight a ghost right now. It'll be worth it. Very much in the style of the game's art is the school drain. There are a bunch of uh, events that are much more abstract than this, which I chose not to download. But this one is potentially pretty good. While walking to your next informant, a strange man bumps into you. He is in such a hurry that something falls from his pocket into a nearby drain. Let's try to reach it. Luck check failure. Minus one stamina. A rat bit me while I was trying to get it. So the purpose of this event is if you pass the option that I chose, you get a small key. No matter what timeline you're on, it gives you the small key so you can do small key stuff. Which is otherwise fairly difficult to accomplish. Because there's only one other way to get the small key. Um, yeah, as much as I like playing dress-up, we'll keep it in storage for now. I might want to play dress-up more later. But we're going for another mask right now. 
Okay. The chibi version of the character. It used to be called via a different parameter. So I had to go through and change the text of the parameter for bonus characters that were not made as recently as Chonky to get them working. Investigating the library, you find an old book about local legends with an inappropriate name for such anatomy of the brain. Let's read it. I'll check failure. You read a random page. It's badly used, but you can read a few sentences using the teeth of the local gods. The exact process is they're swapped beyond any kind of morale or ethics. You just don't get it. They did not write it in dog, unfortunately. But we did our best to keep up anyway. What do I have for spells? Flesh for growth. Ooh, Ashen Contract is perfect. I am going to zap a Akamanto. Do I have any injuries? Nay. A doctor heals them for free if you pass a luck check, I think. I always fail it. Okay, back to the school. This thing. How did I think this was a discarded pile of clothes? Seems like I should be able to squeeze in another attack, but no. I can squeeze in a better attack. Total of 8, 11 damage. Non-lethal, but... Fairly likely to hit them all. Except for when I don't. So now I need to land three of these. It's a total of eight actions per turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because, yeah, I have energy left over, but I can't use it. There we go. Lump of flesh. Let's slather it on my face. I got branded. Probably would prefer not to be branded. Uh, I do not have the old coin either. I don't know what my backstory is. I look that up. Seventh curse. Not allowed to have friends. Ah oh, well, I haven't attempted to get friends anyway. I have used a lot of money. So maybe that was for the best. You cannot get any modded um, allies as of this time. You cannot get any modded items. So modded weapons are also impossible to implement at the time being. Maybe someday. Man across the street. A man from across the street has been staring at you ever since you arrived at the bus station. You have about five minutes left before the bus arrives and are unsure if you can take the stare much longer. That is a disturbing scenario to be in. Let's confront him. Very high charisma. Man quickly darts into the side street before you can reach him. Notice a bag on the ground. Find a note inside. The note has your name and the words, watch them. You shudder, realizing that he's been following you the whole time. 15 EXP. <clears throat> the Monday update provided the masks and uh, status effects to appear on your character model. And it made it so that enemies can have weaknesses. Riots of 1965. Why is this book in the library's folklore section? It's not even an actual book, but a handwritten journal of some transfer student from 1965. It seems he was an avid collector of occult stories and witnessed the riots that occurred in Shi Shiokawa during the year's summertime. Let's read. Perception check failure. Unfortunately, you do not find much interesting information in the journal. Plus more experience. All right, curse toilet. Blue paper got me. Hmm. <clears throat> got me choked last time. Minus four stamina. Which is fine. I had maxed out stamina. And now, for the coup de gras. One time use, instant kill. 
the blammo. Blood flows. Somehow. I don't know what we did to him, but it was gruesome. It is done. Is the effect of that spell. Roads closed. Our bath water has not been ruined. Yeah, getting choked should bring down your reason. Apparently both red and blue paper brings down your stamina. I think. Perception might be a good one to get. Deduction. Would have been good to get sooner. I'll take it. I think I'm going to top off dexterity. I just abandon the other stats. Honestly, I don't care about solving the lighthouse at the end. It'll be a nice bonus. It won't actually help me in any way. I won't get any achievements for completing the run. So this is a big moment. Honestly, I don't want to put on the Crestfallen Mask just yet. But I will, because it brings down Doom. I'll put it on later. As Chonky has other facial animations that can be shown off. We'll see if that occurs. After I recover a bunch of stats. Stats almost maxed out. Doom can be brought down by another 10%. We only have two mysteries left. Looks good for us. Freezing Flat, Tenacious Thief, Romantic Romance, or Beautiful Bloom. The lovely love from the love of my life. Our character has incredibly high charisma, so maybe we can uh, get a little advantage here. Let's find out. You've been waiting for today. You have a date with Kyrie Minami. Your neighbor, who's new in town. A hot date. For once, maybe you'll have one good day. What can possibly go wrong? Everything. Fucking everything. No way. How could anything go wrong for old Chonky? Alright. Time to go find her then, I guess. She's downtown. Why did we not decide on a place to meet? Maybe we did. And we're just trying to remember exactly where it is. Hearing footsteps, you turn around. Pretty woman in a sweater. Natural beauty, yes. This is exactly what I need. Oh, this is the uh, aspiring model. Appreciates our beauty. Pretty tough fight, honestly. Still topping out at 11 damage. And she does more damage after taking a hit. I am going to politely excuse myself. And head to the monument, because I am hurting at this point. But now the monument is still pretty cheap, because I haven't used it at all. This one fund. If I go back, I'm going to want more funds. I can get more funds, though. By selling this mask. Dog treats are worth nothing if you try to sell them. Why would I want to sell them? They're delicious. And all for me. For a small town, it's pretty hard to navigate. And you've lived here for quite a while, so that says something. Hold on, is that her? Hot on the trail. Or hot day. Gray day. Ah, oh, there we go. We met her. Heavily accented voice says, you spot Kyrie in probably the gothest looking shit you've ever seen. What is with the writing in this mystery? She's holding a battered old briefcase with many scribbles in foreign languages. Let's dog hug. You hug her, but just slightly. Lots of people around here would freak out if they thought they were going, they were going to be crushed. What? It's just that kind of town full of scared people. I'm so glad both of us could make it. So far, so good. Kyrie pulls up a map, and you begin to search for a place you know no one else will be in, and find a lake in the woods. How romantic? 
Wait, I'm still in the downtown. Why am I finding a lake in the woods here? All right, fighting them gets you shot in the gut. I don't know if they'll take two funds. Hopefully. Yes. Mm. Pleasure doing business with you. Not going to get shot to death this time. Um, I guess I will wait for the uh, blood thief to give me more funds if they are needed. Wow, this is just wonderful. Now people are whispering about you. What is people's problem? Right? Now this is why you wanted a remote spot. Between you and Hoshinuma is a tiny village, which you've got to navigate. Best bet is to ask for directions and hope. Directions at the seaside, as we can't get to the village without asking someone in the seaside. Opus. To get away from the unwarranted staring, you enter a flea market. Damn, someone must have really hated their belongings because this shop is full of trinkets and shinies. For example, that ugly ass lucky cat figurine. Um, let's steal it. <laughs> so, can you touch a thing? It springs to life, shrieks, and bites you. Now I'm coughing blood over here. Can't have that. So. Rather than wait for the blood thief, I'm gonna panic myself. Hit the doctor's office. Because I need that dex. I got badly bruised. Minus one strength, I can afford that. I can afford these painkillers. Chow down. It's about time we donned Restfallen Mask. That's not coming off. We keep it on the side. Now, normally if you remove the Crestfallen Mask, it gives you a faceless... Um, detriment status. So we're not going to remove the mask we want it on. Oh, that's right, you can wear two masks. So long as one of them is the Crestfallen. Um, between you and Hoshinuma, Tiny Village, blah blah blah. Same text. Hey, the power of anime. You arrive at a remote park in a small village by the edge of town. Rows and rows of blossoming cherry trees follow your line of sight so far. How curious. You note that the trees have bloomed for quite a while now, as you stare at all of it. If that's not a good omen, I don't know what is. Minus 5% doom. Glorious. Solve the map because I can't wear it anymore. Let's go northeast past the park. Can we just go east? I don't want to remain intact. That's pretty ominous. What lies to the east? Reverie of decay. I am dust and I'm decaying as I rot away in this putrid amalgamation of flesh and bone. Demons swarm by my side as I descend into a miasma of sickness that envelopes the world. Deeper and deeper into the oblivion that consumes us I go. Into the emptiness that remains of this broken world. Uh, I find solace in the shadows of death, for I am eternal in this land of dead gods. I become the despair that I seek, the depravity, blah blah blah. Ah. Uh. Thorodax, come on. Inappropriate for our power of anime adventure. Well, better safe than sorry. No matter how convoluted it is to walk just to the east. The evergreen is stretching so far across and turning the setting sun into a bronze glow on your face. And it is so pretty. Best of all, nothing has gone wrong since you entered the forest. And nothing will ever go wrong. You're sitting on a smooch cliff and watch the waves flow. What the hell is that noise? Oh god damn it. Kyrie mutters to herself as something emerges from behind you. Not again. 
It's an annoying apparition. Scribbled. Right behind us. It is a ghost, though. Can only deal three damage at a time. Yeah. So it's six damage a piece. So we'll take a while. I might want to mind drain a few times. Yeah, mind drain now. Oh, it doesn't cost reason. It doesn't normally cost reason, so that's fine. Keep on stabbing that ghost. Only 4 HP remains. There we go. Here it looks best. And the mystery's still not over. Back, you fiend. Get out of here. Kyrie throws a bunch of salt on the specter, and subsequently, you. I'm really sorry they do that, and I can't do anything about it. She looks at you with big, puppy-like eyes. Oh, no wonder we fell for. She then explains what the hell just happened. So yeah, I see dead people. Saw them since I was a tot, and I can kind of understand what they're saying, but... It can be a nuisance, but frankly, they're mostly harmless. I'm just glad it wasn't dangerous. I lost my mind. That's like four or five reason. So turns out your day was, in fact, a witch who can speak to ghosts. Cool, isn't it? Although it was just a brief fling, it was still a pleasant contrast to the shithole of a seaside town. We had a good day. And we fought a ghost. So yeah, custom mysteries. They're a mixed bag. Uh, charisma is already sky high. Our luck is pretty solid, our perception equally solid, but our perception seems to come up more often. Yeah, let's double boost perception. If I level up again, then I'll be able to get perception up to eight. Check the drawer. I don't need any more stamina. So just take a reason. I got salt. Yum. Good for hurting ghosts. Worth no money. Kitchen salt. <clears throat> we got assaulted by our date. And we loved it. Tenacious thief or freezing flat. Or household hell. Into the freezing flat. Every time you head out recently, you've noticed that there is a major draft coming from one of the apartments in your building. The freezing cold air blows out from under the door, chilling you to the bone whenever you pass. Even the coolest of days, it continues to be unusually frigid in that floor. Now, normally you wouldn't care. As someone wants to live their life is none of your business. However, this week, the landing is warm. And randomly, one day during the week, you hear a voice coming from behind the door. Hey you, yeah you! Head over to the door and ask what they need. Listen! The AC in here quit, and look, I don't have much time. It's like a million degrees in here. Can you get me some ice? I don't mind doing favors for people, but this is just weird, and wasn't asked for very kindly. Ah, uh, well. We're a good boy. We're gonna help out. This particular mask does... Blur our charisma, unfortunately. Made it a little harder to read. Mm -mm. It's mostly because Chonky's portrait is gigantic. Much larger than many of the other character portraits. But you do want to see a lot of it. Okay. Sharp Dressed Man is here. It's good to see you. You turn around to see a Sharp Dressed Man. Smiles at you. Um... Meeting was inevitable. Do not fear me. I mean, you no harm. Makes us more uncomfortable, despite trying to reassure us. Pulls out a thick envelope. Now receive the bounty. We decide to accept the bounty. Full of money. Masters of the Third Circle will be pleased to hear of this. He chuckles. See you out there. And he's gone. We got a buck. Well worth it. 
Runner Bodega, sadly, not that one run by an adorable Shiba. <laughs> Happened to have a two for one sale on five kilogram bags of ice. And back to the apartment. The dog was all out of ice. So, body horror. Suddenly you feel sick and your vision blurs. An increasingly sharp noise rings in your ears. The nausea lasts only for a few seconds, but in succession, bizarre images start overlapping vividly in your head as if someone is sending you messages. God created mankind in his own image. In his own image, he created them. Oh, we accidentally went to church. And our eyeballs fell out. Minus one stamina. Voice behind the door sounds nervous. We're not allowed to bring the ice inside. We just leave it there. And we gotta go to the tool company, to fix the AC. Well, the hardware shop is in the seaside. Let's go to the each altar. While taking a walk at the beach, you discover... Oh, that says beach altar. <laughs> the text gets distorted when you play in uh, 4x3, which I'm doing, and then I'm stretching it out in post. It looks as if it was set up only recently, and the markings on the stones are still fresh. Few candles, a tinderbox, and an offering bowl are heaped in a small pile behind one of the stones. Break it, we can pray, we can touch them. Uh, let us pray. I'll check failure. Extreme failure. Good thing there aren't critical failures in this game. Yeah, nothing happens. Didn't know enough. Came all the way out here to find that the Ooh tool company is closed due to a family emergency. Well, you hope everything is okay, but without another option, we just head back. Having wasted our time. All right, faulty elevator suddenly pops open. There's a weird, tall woman. Uh, doesn't seem that tall. Has a lot of HP, though. Now, we're only at 50% doom with one mystery left. But I'm not allowed to run away for absolutely no reason. Ah, uh, well, what can I do? I can recover HP. Or reason. For now, I guess I'll start stabbing. We now stab fast enough to get a third one in there. Yeah, that's our best bet for damage. Pretty good. No music, of course. Who needs it anymore? Now we're at max reason, unfortunately. And we only need seven. So let's guarantee it. Right, four, three, seven. And the Cyclops is dead. They are closed. You have to let him borrow your AC in the meantime. Into the village. We gotta fix this particular AC before our neighbor melts. Our very icky neighbor. Sometimes we kill our neighbors, sometimes we go across the entire town trying to save them. <clears throat> Local magician is performing as part of a charity event to help raise money. Some of the victims of the strange events you there. Step right up. We are his lovely assistant. Let's help him. Reception check success. It says some magic words and asks you to stick your hand into the hat. You pull a cute dwarf rabbit out of the hat. The audience cheers and we crack a big spile. Chonky is thrilled, plus two reason. Didn't need it, but... All my stats are doing really good for this late in the game. Oh, I didn't see what happened. That's fine. Tataru again. 
like I said, plenty of doom to spare. And we're quite likely to hit with all these. And indeed we did. Out of here, Tataru. You enter the floor with your neighbor's flat. You are hit with the most overwhelming stench. It's so disgusting, like... It smells like when the refrigerator goes out for a long period of time. Number 23. Jim Carrey would be horrified. Hey, friend, you're just in time. Come on in. Well, that's right neighborly of him. You were too late. The neighbor isn't your neighbor anymore. Come here, beautiful. I want you to be part of me. Decay is here. Minus four stamina a hit. 40 HP. Decay is here to stay. I'm going to have to use Flesh Regrowth a few times here. Fortunately, we have a very high chance to hit. Despite my panic. Yeah, we'll save this. Do it a bunch of times. See where this gets us. And do what we gotta do. It's going quickly enough, but I already need to flesh regrowth. Boom. Uh, and another one. No, another one would put me at... Yeah, exactly maxed out. Perfect. I guess I should have uh, Mind Drained first. Would have saved myself a turn. And therefore, four damage. The final sickening splat of the mold creature's head splitting open is enough to force your innards to empty as you spew vomit all over the floor. That's perfectly normal for a dog, though. You stumble out into the hallway and down the stairs. You need to call the landlord ASAP. And possibly take some antibiotics. That was a difficult boss. I'm lucky my stats were pretty much maxed out. The special rescue team is called in to remove the bolt from the apartment. The normal cleanup crew just wasn't going to cut it. As such, the entire building has been evacuated and quarantined for a few days. You would like to stay with your friend Masafumi during that time. What they discover inside the apartment is actually kind of amazing. Half of the apartment was basically converted into a large, deep freezer. With just a metric ton of HVAC units pumping sub-zero air in. And one of the compressors went out. The entire thing malfunctioned and started pumping in hot air. Turns out that the resident in your apartment building was, wasn't always evil. They had just been trying to contain the mold, slowly growing on them for quite some time. It didn't like the cold. After the SRT finishes cleaning the apartment, everyone is welcome back. Hey, you even get a discount on your rent for the inconvenience. But the nightmares will never leave you. You can go back to your apartment now. After all, you need a shower. Come on, contaminated water! Okay. Time skip. Plus 5% doom. I got doom to spare. Doom for days. Okay. Event checks automatically pass at less than 3. Reason won't be getting to that point. Oh, that last mystery was uh, quite good. I enjoyed it immensely. Nice work. Whoever's name was in the corner that whole time. Crediting them for the job well done. <clears throat> All event skill checks have been have a negative modifier that makes them harder. Passing an event skill check gives you extra experience. Interesting. I don't think either of these will help me at this point. So, let's just get our perception to eight. Let's see if there's a perception check. As we dominate effortlessly the entirety of the lighthouse. Load up. Yeah, plenty of reason, plenty of doom. We are all set. Into the lighthouse. Crack all the locks. Just head on up. 
Solo. Okay, I have no idea who the second enemy was. Um, I suspect it was Akamanto. Wrong answer. 5% doom. I got doom to spend. Light the way. I'm holding a flashlight. Okay, the second mystery was the Fear Festival. Hell yes. Got you. I can talk you out of it. I have very high charisma. Uh, this is knowledge. I remember that from my short clip. There we go. Like I said, Lighthouse posed no threat whatsoever. <laughs> There's Chonky. Enjoying a job well done. Aw, uh, unfortunately not featured in the victory image, but there we go. We'll always remember him. The best boy. So, let's move on up the uh, dog food chain. So I got plenty more dogs to show off. Plenty more mysteries, plenty more of everything. Way more than I can show off in a single stream, so I'm going to stream this game again tomorrow. But for now, let's keep going with Alex Wolf. And... Honestly, Seventh Curse is good because it gives us a lot of uh, resources to work with. Chonky has a sad face when his HP gets low, and we didn't see it. Even though my HP got so low that I died in my first run. Um, he also has Innsmouth Look and Broken Nose and a bunch of other effects that can appear on his character model. Alex also has a lot of specific effects, and we're going to see a bunch of them in this run. Let's get to it. Doesn't much matter. We'll go with it, though, too, for variety's sake. Probably regret it. Although my stats are fantastic. My perception is so strong that I think I'm going to go for a perception-specific weapon. Here in the seaside. And I'll go to the history club. And then probably not actually go there at any point. Empty bottle. Fill her up, and take the EXP. So, the exact same eight custom mysteries that appeared last time appear this time again. The game loads the first eight that it sees. I have 34 unique mysteries installed. So, in order to play the other ones, I will have to uninstall this eight and then come back to the game later. So for tomorrow's stream, I will do just that. Get rid of this eight. Hopefully see all eight for the remainder of this stream. And then next time we'll see eight new custom mysteries. Um, money. And costume B, raincoat. It's not bad. Not bad at all. The drawing here is really good, but really incongruous with the art style. I kind of love it. Once again, I want to do... Two real mysteries. And two custom mysteries. Well, three custom mysteries. That should work out. Fear Festival again. Uh, no. Not Fear Festival. We want... Crimson Cape and... The Bulletin.
who knows how long it'll take. So far, pretty long. That's the botanist, Crimson Cape. An interesting thing about the Alex character is the developer also drew portraits for wearing a, um, what's it called? Demon mask. But there is currently no parameter in the game that displays a demon mask on custom characters. So, it just doesn't do anything. It's in the game files, but nothing will load it at the time being. Unfortunately. You know what? We'll go for the ritual mask instead. So I'll just get the bulletin. You know, I got the crimson cape there. Because there is a drawing for the ritual mask. I'll just show that off. Beckoning Bolton, very good. Once again, takes the creepy cicadas, though. We'll have to do one more run to get the creepy cicadas. In the meantime... Let's try out... What's this? Found footage? Too bad, found footage is kind of boring. Okay, I'm stuck with that one. But the freezing flat we've seen, very recently, in fact. Cannibalistic. Colonists. Every night for the past week, bodies have been found across Shiokawa. Lifeless faces frozen, frozen in shock. Unfortunately, the face is about all that's left. Each victim was expertly butchered of everything but bone and gristle. The police are clueless. Almost nobody in Shiokawa goes out at night anymore. The bodies turn up like clockwork anyway. Here's what's going on here. Jack the Ripper's in town, and he might be a cowboy. We hear through a friend that a new victim has been found downtown. If you hurry, you might be able to investigate before police arrive. Creepy. <clears throat> so I said I would go for a specific weapon here. Also going to take a can of acid. First. I'm gonna not get the item I want. Still not getting it. There we go. A melee perception weapon with pretty high damage. It's a good weapon, especially if you have a very high perception. Speaking of... We'll get a flashlight. And a compass, I guess. I tend to just spend a lot of doom my first time through. Might lose reason each time we lose stamina. That can be very costly. Hopefully it won't be. And there's a precious flashlight. Onward with the investigation. We got a feckless fortune teller. Stopping by the occult shop, the usual shopkeeper is nowhere to be found. Instead, a young man sits at the desk. Inside a deck of cards, he winks at you. You got a hot date. Auntie's left to watch the shop. Here for a reading while you wait? It's on the house. Gotta go for it. The stars uh, must be right. I'm back again, you hear? Maybe next time I'll have something more interesting for you. Minus 2% doom. Good, I was spending doom like crazy. This body was just like the rest. Takes everything you have, not to vomit. Looking closer, you find a weathered piece of paper, half covered in blood. It seems to be a map written in English. You decide to hit the library to translate it. We are in Japan, so speaking English is a bit of an uncommon luxury. Our English is pretty rusty, so it takes you a while to decipher the map. It's mostly incomplete, but details a lake to mountains, labeled with a name you've never heard before. Are we going to Hanuda Village? <laughs> One of the neighbors is a geography buff. Maybe they'll know. 
<clears throat> Eyes outside. You wake up in a cold sweat. By chance, you happen to glance outside your open bedroom door. You see a pair of glowing eyes in the hall, staring. Um, let's hide. Lost some stamina. That was a creepy guy doing creepy stuff. Somehow, our intimidation face didn't work to scare off the would-be threat. But we tried. Mm. Show the map to our neighbor. Their eyes narrow. Something off about the map. Shortly after, you're told to visit their colleague outside of town. Off we go. <clears throat> you got a dream pyramid, not a cream pyramid. You fell asleep on the bus of the village. You wake up in a white desert. The road in front of you with footprints leading to an upside down floating pyramid. It seems impossibly distant. Uh, let's, let's head for it. Succeeding in my strength check. As exhausting as it is, you manage to get to the pyramid. As you look up at the light, as you look up, a light hits you, draining the energy you had left. Waking up, you find yourself on a bench outside the village. One free injury removal. I have no injuries yet, but I can cast that whenever I have one. A gaunt, bespectacled man answers the door and invites you inside. His brow furrows, and he asks you to wait as he examines it closer. After an excruciating hour sitting in a dusty living room filled with what you hope are model skeletons, the man returns, claiming that the map is 200 years old. Okay. Brain model. I need to take a bit of free time visit the school festival. One of the students made a brain. Gotta check it out. Uh, at first, it seems inaccurate, but it actually looks very realistic. A uh, little prominence on the frontal lobe. Yeah, there's a weird... Uh, what is that? The uh, pituitary gland growth from, from beyond that movie with uh, Jeffrey Combs. Check it out. It's all about the pituitary gland. Reading through the history texts at the library, you find mention of a caravan of settlers who disappeared in a fierce snowstorm during America's colonizing days. Human remains were all that could be found, butchered, just like the bodies in Shukawa. Someone is colonizing Japan. That really is horrifying. Takumi, just like the villagers said, there's a man waiting for you at the top of the stairs leading to the nearby abandoned temple. Finally you've arrived, he says, a briefcase in one hand, a lit cigarette in the other. Craftmaster Takumi at your service, kiddo. Fancy a ring? A mask, maybe? Honestly, I wouldn't mind a mask, but I am fresh out of cash. He knows a lot. Smirking, you've got yourself involved. A mess, truly outside the world. Uh, third circle, Mr. T. Class of 65. Yep, Mr. T is involved. Well, we gained some experience by learning about Mr. T. And some doom. <clears throat> you return to the expert's house, finding the door ajar. His body's in the living room. He joined his model bones in a gruesome display. Bloody footprints can be seen leading toward the forest. Stealing yourself, you follow the tracks as the snowstorm picks up. In May? No, it's June now. Even more inappropriate for a snowstorm. Fighting through the storm, you come to a clearing. All around you, the people in an Old West clothing, all skin and bones. They lick their lips as they cross through the camp. One large man steps forward to confront you. Let's fight him. The 
Furious Wind. Bites into your exposed skin. I have fur. I'm not worried about it. Um. Okay. These bosses have a lot of HP. Alright. 50% chance to hit. This. Hmm. Here's an injury. Yeah, I think I just want to boost two of these. Or maybe guarantee some of them. Because things ain't looking great. Well, let's go for it. As usual, miss the ones that I boosted. Hit the others. It's the numbers on this boss are ridiculous. What am I supposed to do about it? Well, I can brace. And... Boost that three times. I absolutely need to hit both of these this turn. But instead I have to take a risk. A big risk. I need to hit a 60% chance. Or I'm dead. Whiffed it. Died. That boss was obscene! Who made that? Ah, well. So, I guess that's Alex's journey for now. Let's try out the third guy. Alex's stats were fantastic, too. But that boss just had way too much going on. Colonizer's gonna colonize. All over my face. Damien doesn't like friends. First he's solo. So I'm definitely gonna give him the seventh curse. The way I gave just about everybody. And I'm definitely gonna give him a Thotu. That might be why the boss did so much damage. I think I was using a Thotu, so four damage instead of the usual three, and then Brace would have brought it down to one. Oh, I didn't change any of my introductory stuff. It's probably fine. Damien is the oldest of the characters that I have installed. So no unique masks, no weird stuff that I gotta do. I don't gotta go out of my way to show off much of anything. Just the new mysteries. And uh, whatever fun stuff I feel like stumbling into. So we got cicadas, the romance. Um, yeah, we'll go for the bulletin instead of the romance. Beautiful bloom or adolescent association. Dreadful disappearance. Did I do the dreadful disappearance? Is that, yeah, that's the one where I turned invisible. And there's the colonists, hmm. Maybe I'll re-roll this so that I get something better on that one. Yeah, let's see. This one needs to be good. The other ones doesn't matter. Your festival is not good. School scissors is fine. Morbid mermaids, that's interesting. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with morbid mermaids. It's even a good one to start with because my strength is very high. All my stats are good except for Charisma, which is a 1. Gotta pay the piper somewhere. We know Morbid Mermaids. It's one of my favorite mysteries in the game. But we need to get the A ending in order to get the X. That means no side quest. We will need a weapon.
Monkey Wrench is probably a good starter. Yeah, I got plenty of money. Crowbar would allow me to instant kill the boss, but then I get no axe. Two. Monkey Wrench costs us one strength. The Fire Axe has better damage and does not cost us one strength. Well, maybe I'll shop for my fellow dog after I finish this. Walk in the park. I need to relax a bit. He decided to go to the park to vent. All this Eldritch Horror business. Going to be the end of you if you don't take a breather. Let's lay on the grass. Plus 25 experience. <laughs> All from decompressing. After one event. Wow. Fruitful. This is why Twitter trolls will always tell you to go touch grass. Because it gives you all the experience in the world. They were right this whole time. Who'd have thought? So I need the compass and I need a bottle of water. Oh, I bought a second compass. What is wrong with me? I needed the flashlight. There it is. Now I can't afford a bottle of water. Um, I'll wing it for now. Got a curse? I'm suicidal. Yeah. It's the inverse of paranoia. <clears throat> I don't know if I've ever showed it off, but paranoia has a side effect. Where if you have a uh, ally, it replaces the option to let them go with the option to stab them to death. Because you don't trust them. Definitely don't want to sell Doom, so... Off with the stamina. My money's back. I will take an empty bottle. Stay on the trail. Of the bad janitor. The mad janitor, even. Hey, we got a corrector. Is this another internet troll? I'm gonna cause some trouble. Well, we can deal a lot of damage here. I just need to hit twice with these. Let's boost the hell out of them. I get two boosts on the first, one boost on the second. Well, now I'll guarantee it. I want to take a rest before I uh, go for the boss. Abandoned laundromat. Last week, one of the laundromats in the neighborhood have closed down, its owner having disappeared without a trace. The police investigating found nothing. Tonight, you decided to sneak through the service door, which was left unlocked. You quickly notice that the smell of detergent still lingers in the air. Like the washing machines, the dirty clothes, or inside the office. Washing machine. Nervously, you approach the washing machines. Fortunately, or not, they're not haunted or inhabited by some strange beings from beyond. They're just normal washing machines inside a non-haunted abandoned laundromat. Relieved, you leave the laundromat, and uh, there we go. Kinda wish I had failed that. I have to imagine the result would have been more entertaining. Um, yeah, I can't hear that status effect. Hospital only treats physical ailments. Rooftop of the damned. One of the most popular students has recently committed suicide. Um, jumped because of the evil thing. So we look for clues where she jumped. Perception check failure. You're next, ha ha ha. You quickly flee the rooftop, feeling someone stare at your back. So, here's the latest victim. The uh, mad janitor wants to turn us into a mermaid. A were mermaid. Honestly, that would look pretty awesome. But we're not going to let it happen. We might want to brace, I 
if this is going to go many turns. And with a 50% chance to hit, it is probably going to go many turns. So, race. Boost that twice for 70% chance. <laughs> I can swing twice. 250s adds up to 100, right? Um, or I can guarantee six. The double boosted eight is maybe our best bet. Uh, honestly, you want to go for guaranteed damage when you're doing this so that you brace for as few turns as possible. Phase weak to monkey wrenches. Lucky us. And for the record, a maximum damage turn is uh, 20 damage. But not 21, unfortunately. However, we can finish him with a monkey wrench by throwing it at him. That said, we're going to want to load. We we got to go for something lucky here. Okay. Very good. Okay, I can boost two and one. Go for the best. They might both deal nine damage. Yeah, lethal. Pretty lucky. I don't normally get that lucky when I'm streaming. But I did. Load up with one of the best weapons in the game. Okay, this is not Fast Swimmer. But I think Fast Swimmer is in my pool. Ooh, that's even better. Plus one to all stats, so long as I don't have any allies. And I have the seventh... Um, Seventh curse or something? So I can't have allies. Nothing better than that. Except maybe Fast Swimmer. Might even want to boost knowledge so that I can eventually get it to a place where I can actually use it. But all my stats are so high, it's probably not going to matter. No spells, so that doesn't matter. Bath time. Stamina. We'll whip the monkey wrench at anyone who wants to give me trouble. Combat is going to be brutal. I'm going to maul anyone who gets in my way. Looking forward to it, quite frankly. Oh, right. I want to skip this one as well. Unfortunately, this is an old character. Masks were only implemented in the Monday update. So it's all the more impressive that Chalky has three separate masks. They were all literally drawn in the past two days. But... We have no real reason to go on the romantic romance again. So, Crimson Cape is probably the best choice there. And the Tenacious Thief. Let's go to the Creepy Cicadas. I've been looking forward to this one for a while. Cicadas have emerged earlier this year and in much larger numbers than usual. Their chirping is absolutely deafening. And what's worse, they exhibit the most impossible behavior. They behave like humans. They take bus rides, they visit shops, and the school and the hospital. They meet at the playgrounds and at the bars, loudly chirping together. Some people try to get rid of them, some are thrilled. That's me, I'd be thrilled. Some are terrified. We are friends with bugs. Just the town is full of bugs who have made themselves citizens of the town. One of the cicadas has just has uh, just went down the stairs and out of your apartment building. It's headed downtown. Could it lead you to the explanation behind these recent events? Let's hope so. There's a thief. 
We failed our perception check and lost two bucks. But we only had one. Could have been worse. Hmm. Cicada is skittering along the ground ridiculously fast for such a small critter. Turn the corner and wait, what's that? What is it? A secret meeting. Cicadas you've been following meets up with two others. What are they doing? They chirp at each other, clearly having a conversation. The meeting ends after a while. The other cicadas disappear into the nearby alleys, while your cicada continues its run. Where is it going now? You decide to follow the cicada from earlier. It's making a beeline towards the high school. A while later, you notice other cicadas going the same direction. They are converging on the school. It's the birds all over again, but this time, the cicadas. Materials theft. You stop in front of the local high school. This late in the afternoon, it's closed. But this doesn't stop a cloud of cicadas to cross the gate back and forth. You observe them for a while and finally realize what they're doing. Stealing! These are crime cicadas. Every so often, a cicada leaves the school grounds carrying a small item on its back. A ruler, a piece of plywood, a plastic cap. Human-like behavior, secretive group meetings, theft of items from the school. Are these cicadas intelligent? What sort of sinister deed are those insects planning? The one you followed just boarded the bus. We gotta hop on in hot pursuit. <clears throat> Chitinous passengers. Every occupied, every seat is occupied by a cicada, or two, or more. Uh, they've been doing this for the past few days. I just stopped questioning it. Just want to do my job, you know? Sit down. <laughs> Plenty of room. Cicadas only take up like one hundredth of a seat. It's down near the front, where there's no cicadas. They're on to me. When you leave the bus after the cicadas, you realize that they're nowhere to be seen. How could they all run away so quickly? They have wings, for one thing. Someone in the village must have seen them, right? Oh, a beautiful mountain. While walking at the outskirts of the village, you realize that the afternoon sun is setting behind a nearby mountain on a spectacular view. Once you glance at the mountain, you feel a strange pull, an inexplicable desire to go to the mountain right now. You walk for hours, yet the mountain does not come any closer. Go up in the ground and weep, as you realize that you will never become one with the mountain. Tragic. Quite a costly failure as well. The only thing that villagers know about cicadas is that the local forest is teeming with them. Between them and the construction workers, it's all noise. We can't sleep comfortably because of them. Them and the construction workers. Well, on my way there, I got claustrophobia. Rancid smell is overbearing as you crawl through a small tunnel. Let's push it on. Luck check failure. Um, but we get a flashlight. A double flashlight. Maybe I'll throw it at another enemy. Going deeper into the forest, you hear the faint sounds of bulldozers and trucks somewhere. Finally, you reach a large amount of dirt. Wait, is this a temple? We'll find out after the break. There. I am ready to approach the temple. Just had to go all the way home. Head right back to the Cicada Secret. Yep, it's a temple. Stare in disbelief as the cicadas add new things to the temple's building. Their attention seems to be focused on the strange black idol in the center of the shrine. Why did cicadas build a temple? What kind of deity requires prayer from insects? Their chirping is quite melodic and loud, similar to a chant. As you creep closer to the temple, Feel that you're on the verge of witnessing something truly terrible. Every event has raised our doom significantly. 
You straighten up, hearing a sudden noise. That heavy rumbling is picked up in volume, and suddenly the tiny building is leveled by a bulldozer. Problem solved. You run to the front of the vehicle, yelling at the driver to stop. Why? Panicked, he opens the door and hops out of the bulldozer. I thought we wanted this. What are you doing here? I almost ran you over. This is a construction site. No, author no unauthorized personnel is allowed in here. His fellow workers arrived to see what have happened. That's right, have happened. You explain to them that they've just destroyed a miniature temple built by the cicadas. Why? Why would they listen to that? Cicada cicadas? Miniature temple? You drunk. What are you, a Chica From Chikawa? You Chikawa kills uh, hayseeds. Always imagining cicada societies. Heard that you guys are having some cicada problems, but chanting cicadas? Sure you didn't bump your head on something on your way here? You look at the workers as they kick the dirt around and search for answers. Boss is just some trash and sticks mixed with the dirt. All right, guys, enough delays. The workers slowly return to their work while the driver climbs back into the machine. Get out of here before I call the police. Defeated, you slowly make your way through the forest. Something has changed. Construction noises are still there, but the chirping of the cicadas is gone. Were there actually multiple endings? It said ending A. I think um, custom mysteries can only have one ending. I think that. I'm not sure. Mm. Cicadas never come back. And only we know the truth. But not the whole truth. Frankly, I feel like we learned nothing. But we tried. It's the thought that counts when investigating cicadas. Ah, uh, reason. <clears throat> and... Crimson Cape. Got... Beautiful Bloom. Let's try the Tenacious Thief. Been a long day. Just want to go home and watch some television. We've been chasing cicadas for hours and hours. But when we get to the apartment, the latch is damaged. Um... Someone found our investigations. The thief is still there. She knows she's been busted. Pushes past us into the hall. We need to chase her. So we start at the apartments. Maybe we can go to the school, the forest, or downtown. Downtown is the only one adjacent to where we are right now. Seems like common sense to uh, hit that one. Hospital, home, or village? Home is adjacent. Hospital is also adjacent. We did sort of just come from home. Let's try home. Up oh, plus 5% doom. And something changed. And it took us to the hospital anyway. So, apartments, mansion, schools. School's the only one adjacent. No extra doom. Oh, we got a level up. Nicotine rush. We could get that if we buy some cigarettes. Uh, perception, charisma. Get our charisma out of the gutter. Maybe I'll go for cigs. Ah, charisma for safety. And a little knowledge boost. So it seems like we're just supposed to pick the adjacent uh, area. Like the seaside. No extra doom. So I only picked one wrong option. We're at the seaside, but we can go there again. Or we can go to the mansion. Let's keep on chasing that thief. 
get an experience all along. Um, we're at the mansion. The village is next door. <clears throat> it's all unique um, events. The mansion was also adjacent, but we just came from there, so we assume the thief didn't go back, so we go to the forest instead. And... Failure! I got one wrong. And that's all it took. And here's the credits. It's unique. And short. So we did successfully get robbed. Oh well. That's a simple one. Um, I actually don't need any stats whatsoever, so I will take experience for once. Uh, do I have alternate costumes? I don't think I even checked. Yeah, the money's still intact. Do I have a cloak? Dagger doesn't work. In fact, I've checked the um, files for this character and there is no alternate costume. So... It would have been impossible for there to be anything there. Which again, this is all custom assets. It's impressive that, that we have the one costume. Let's do a... You know, let's close with a unique mystery. After a short bathroom break. One second. Where were we? That's... Yep, Crimson Cape. Let's knock it out. Um, I kind of want to do... Gossip one, but whatever. Either way, it's going to be gruesome. This poor Akamanto doesn't stand a chance. I'm also going to throw flashlights and monkey wrenches at him. Um, okay, we're starting in the bathroom. We close the door, we have to fight a ghost. Ghosts are the only thing that can give me a problem at this point. I'll just lose the reason. I've done this mystery to excess over the course of the stream, so let's just, uh... Go through it and see the, uh, new events. Go through the city looking for clues, and your eyes catch something in the sky. Looking up, you see enormous planets covering the moon. Ignore them. Plus 3% doom. Who cares? Planets are headed my way. No big deal, I'm worried about Earth. We're Earthlings. Let's deal with Earth things? That's a Mr. Show reference, but I clearly don't remember it precisely. This is a really long thing. Tap on the shoulder, you turn to see a masked girl holding a note. Um... Must be so nice to have a healthy set of teeth. I miss what I could do with them. Chewing, biting, tearing. Would you mind waiting while I borrow some of yours? Just as you finish the note, the girl unmasks. Aw. Oh, we lost all our teeth. Oh god. Let's not read that part. And uh, put her out of her misery quickly here. Less said about that one, the better. <laughs> the um, custom uh, enemies and events and stuff, they're a mixed bag. 
some of them uh, definitely would not appear in the main game, not by any stretch. But it is World of Horror. They get pretty horrifying. Here's some students talking about this among themselves. Like, oh my gosh, can you believe it? You hear a girl saying, Yuki didn't pray to the old god before class. What a lame-o. Doesn't she know she's like so doomed when the stars are right? We should like totally teach her a lesson and stuff. Um, I want him to do that, so. As you walk away, you can still hear them gossip. So like, first we tie her up, then we get some needles. Hey Suzuka, can you bring the gasoline? Yeah, great. Maybe after school. Minus three reason. <laughs> Good times. Nice cash. Nice. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen Adventure Time in such a long time. But uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> Okay, we got recruited by someone with a really cool mask. A cultist is talking to somebody between two school buildings after hours. You eavesdrop for a while and the cultist hands the would-be recruit a mask before leaving. With the cultist gone, you approach them. Isn't this great? This is the purpose I've been missing. Our charisma is horrible. I think with threatening we can overpower them, use our strength. Yeah, we practically cannot fail a strength check. I think it te technically requires 14 strength to have it be impossible to fail. But without any penalty, then 12 is an automatic win. Because it rolls a die 12 against your stat. You don't feel particularly good about it, but you are forced to threaten them. To make them see how serious the situation is. Whatever you did, it got through to them. They tear the mask off and throw it to the ground before running away. It's such a cool mask. Uh, we might want to take it for ourselves. Not an option, unfortunately. Um, I think this is a knowledge check. Whatever it is, we can probably pass it, except for Wake Her Up. That's got to be a uh, charisma. Knowledge check. Yeah, we just reach over her shoulder, scroll down to the mouse wheel. Gain some experience. Yeah, this should be the fight. After this event. We got a transfer student. Shy, reclusive student arrived at Shiokawa High the very day the strange things began happening. Rumors have it that she is interested in a cult and wears strange amulets. Carries a weird book. You catch her after class and explain that you can both help each other. Persuade her with a smooth tongue. Just outright telling us what the check is going to be there. Or minus 10 experience. Knowledge check failure. Suddenly you feel a sharp pain in your head. As if something or someone was drilling into your brain from the inside. Yeah, she uh, stole our memories because we were dangerous. We're at risk of tearing it all down. Uh, let's try red paper. Either way, it's minus four stamina. He knifes us in the gut or chokes us. Same result. Well, let's hit him with all we got. Ten down already. Ooh. Oh, I can't hit it with two axes. But uh, all three of these adds up to 21. Now let's go for the gold. I did not get the gold, unsurprisingly. Okay, that's too many actions, unfortunately. I really thought I would miss that last one. <laughs> that tends to be my luck. 
Uh, extra bullets. Certainly don't need those. Uh, knowledge. Sure. That means I can put this in strength. One more mystery. And it's a unique one. Oh, there's the Crestfallen Mask. Slap that on for minus 10 doom. I don't need it. Take a sip of water. Fill it up. And... Reason. Onward to either Beautiful Bloom or Adolescent Association. We'll try the Beautiful Bloom. That leaves a lot of custom mysteries that I didn't get a chance to check out. Next time. You glance at the salaryman passing you. That's salaryman, not salaryman. Passing by you as he adjusts his face mask. That's yet another person suffering from the seasonal allergies that you've seen today. Wouldn't bother you if not for the fact that people with allergies have started abruptly and randomly disappearing from the city. Each day you find some new missing person poster or hear a radio report about this guy or that girl disappearing. The only thing that connects the missing persons is their allergy to the pollen. Turning home from the groceries, you wonder if maybe some of your neighbors know about any of the missing people. Wouldn't hurt to ask. I agree. Instead, you just got a threat up. You have a lead. A member of the local high school track and field team has recently disappeared. Suffering from allergies, disappeared during a jog on the outskirts of the city. Maybe your friends know something about it. Doing some charismatic investigation. Okay, planets.exe. Seen this one before. Let's just yank the plug. Simple malware problem. I mean, when we actually asked IT, they said, turn it off and turn it on. We have done just that. There's a pollen cloud. Walking down the seaside, you realize that a large cloud of pollen is moving towards you. It is turning on the spot and sweeping over the faces of people passing by you. By it. Its movements are very fluid, almost organic. You shiver when you realize that no wind is blowing from that pollen's direction. Turn to your apartment, only to learn that one of your neighbors has gone missing. You need to ask some questions before you go looking for him around the town. Ah, uh, mail day. Oh, it's something evil. Ah, well. Mr. Ooh, the missing neighbor, was also suffering from allergies as of late. He was an avid mushroom picker and had a hobby of collecting postal stamps, his family says. Another neighbor mentions that lately they've heard Mr. Ooh murmur something about the man, the main bus station. So I don't think the postal stamps are going to be relevant. Yes, we'll see. As we investigate the subway. There's a shambler. Stop just outside the bus station. Something is off about this woman. You can see that she isn't drunk, but her movements are very strange and irrational. She's staring off into the distance with a weird smile on her face and is stumbling over her own feet. That's gotta be a charisma check. And I failed my dex. You observe the woman and even follow her for a while. Suddenly a jogger crashes into you and you fall over. Embarrassing. Asking around the bus station, you learn that Mr. Ooh has been seen boarding the bus line that goes through the nearby forest. Then it dawns on you. Everyone who you've investigated so far has connections with nature and the local forest. Okay. Pretty much everyone has connections with nature and forests. But they have specific uh, nature and forest connections. Everything we've seen has been, like, related to the pollen. All the events seem to be unique, which is pretty cool. Same thing with the cicadas, actually. Although it seems to be a hooded child 
leads you to a part of the forest where the sunlight doesn't reach. The woods are dark. There are no trace of the kid. Bright red flowers all around you are blooming and faintly glowing. One of them is bigger. Pick it, destroy it. Let's pick it. As soon as you pick the red flower, you feel connected, accepted by whichever entity currently governs your world. You hear a disembodied voice whispering to you. A successful hunt leads to a bountiful prey. The god will come back and ask for more. Plus two stamina. Good news all around. We are a very skilled hunter. You roam the forest for a while. The dreadful silence of it unnerves you. There's no bird singing, no insects buzzing. The air is full of pollen, and what's worse, you started picking up a faint scent of blood. Okay. It's just old Bark Woman. Let's chop her down. Fortunately, I do have to brace because she does minus three all. But that does mean I can get a guaranteed chop. Or, yeah, 14 would be perfect. Hopefully 85 is enough to land both of these. It is. And we guarantee 10. Get out of there. You enter a very large glade filled with pretty flowers. A few steps later, you freeze, realizing what lies between the flower patches. Dozens of human bodies litter the flower glade. The sight of pretty flowers glowing amongst the corpses is rather out of place. The sweet scent of flower nectar mixing with the, scent, the sweet scent of rotting flesh. I have heard that is a sweet scent. Then you hear it, buzzing coming from inside the corpses. You see their abdomens inflate, bulge, and finally pop, spraying the surroundings with gore. Large dragonflies slowly crawl out of the holes, their wings and thoraxes covered in blood. One by one, they take it to the air, buzzing aloud, swirling like a cloud in the air. When you realize that there's several of them behind you, that's when you realize there's several behind you, You've been surrounded by the giant dragonflies. A multitude of eyes all staring at you with curiosity. Dragonfly curiosity. Just when you think it's over, that the dragonflies will make you their first dinner, or even worse, their next host, they fly up and towards the sunset. A minute or so later, the buzzing is too far for you to hear it. You're alone, surrounded by pretty flowers and broken bodies. Another bug-themed mystery, though we didn't know it going in. Paula must have carried the dragonfly eggs to receptive human hosts. Tell yourself, this is a ridiculous idea, and yet you cannot come up with something more plausible. Even after the di disappearances abruptly stop, cannot shake off the feeling that this is not the last time you've seen those dragonflies. Blood Moon. Just in time for probably no more combat. Good thing, too. This doesn't matter. So, more strength. Last key. Last bath. After I drink up. We are just about done here. Poor Alex. Barely got off the ground, but uh, Chonky had a good time. And Damien also did some good work today. Excellent investigators. You can always trust a dog to get to the bottom of your mystery. This is practically impossible to lose. But we're starting to lose it now. Taking advantage of the one stat that I can't win. Um, I think it was morbid mermaids or creep, creepy skaters. Okay, it was the skaters. We're gonna win the rest of these, except maybe the um, photograph, which is right here. Mad Janitor? Nope. Pass that one too. 
effortless. Could do this all day. I could go through a hundred floor of the uh, lighthouse. Still make it to the top. There we go. Rack the monument. Save the day. Nothing stops Damien. So, one of the new features added in the patch this past Monday was character-specific events can now occur. But they cannot be applied to custom characters, only the base game characters. We'll see if maybe um, people start to actually mod those in. As of the last time I checked, none existed yet. But tomorrow I do have new characters to show off. Plenty more new events. So many more new mysteries. Just an appalling amount of content that we can go through. And of the new stuff we saw today, the vast majority of it was very good. The stuff that was bad was abysmal. But people were trying their best. Or in some cases were just memeing. So far, well worth the effort of putting in all these mods. And it's not that much effort, especially with the most recent update. So tune in again tomorrow if you enjoyed seeing unique, weird, modded content. Because there will be a lot more of it. Thank you, as always, for joining me. And have yourselves a good one.